clearly audible and visible just acknowledge in the live chat window clearly audible and visible uh, very good evening to all I have kept uh, two sessions for the upcoming UPSC exams to be held on 17th of July. In these sessions, my effort will be to help you cover up all your toxicology MCQs and FM MCQs, whatever are there in the last five to seven years in your UPSC exam. So before starting the session, you all know that with every plus subscription, you get access to both live and recorded classes. Then you can take the benefits of iconic subscription. These are the batch courses which have been started targeting your next year PG exams. And there is a test and discussion batch too for your next year PG. This has also been started. Let us start with the first question. Clearly audible and visible, no? All of you try to answer this question. They keep on asking questions from anti roads, poison anti road, or poison or drug and their anti roads. So, this is one topic which you need to cover up. And not only for UPSC exams, it is important for PG as well as FMG exams. Benzodiazepine antagonist goes with flumagenil. Yes, I can write two over here. Copper sulfate. What is the antidote of choice? Copper sulfate can be chelated by penicillamine. So yes, I can write one over here. Antagonist for opioid was your recent PG exam question. Yes, IV naloxone or nalmifene can be used. So yes, four I can write over here. And a specific antidote for your PCM or acetaminophen toxicity is n cysteine or methionine or methionine they help in replenishing the glutathione stores i can write three over here and 2143 goes with option b correct 2143 goes with option b na? so form the complete sequence in upsc you get your stationery so you can form your complete sequence and then put the answer otherwise there might be an error in marking the correct option out of ABC. A very good evening to all. A very good evening to all. So this is one area antidotes, which is repeatedly asked. I have seen in last five to seven years, you get two to three questions from your antidotes area. Yeah. I hope this question is clear. So antidote for opioid poisoning is naloxone, or you can get nalmifene in the option. Nalmifene. Naltrexone is used orally for maintenance of opium poisoning case now this penicillamine word itself contains it acts as a chelator for which poisoning events c for copper the alphabets in penicillamine c for copper l for lead and m for mercury so next time you can see lead here in the option so yes you can match that with penicillamine so penicillamine wide uses is for copper, lead and mercury poisoning. It is effective in acting as a chelator. Clear? Next one. See, another year they asked another question from your antidote area. Match list one with list two and select the correct answer using the, using the code given below the list. So you have to put your answer out of ABCD. But first of all, form the sequence, the alphabet to be matched with the numbers. So form your number sequence quickly and put in your answers as ABCD.
regarding anti roots regarding your toxicology now i will be keeping a special session for you all in an academy app most likely next weekend so whatever theory is required now so that theory we will cover in an academy app in the form of a special class which everyone can attend all of you have formed let me form the answer edta goes with lead yes sodium nitrite for cyanide methylene blue for yes meth hemoglobin poisoning nitrobenzene will lead to meth hemoglobinemic conditions so yes to atropin for opcs there is no specific antidote for kerosene poisoning as such we do symptomatic management so correct answer goes with 3124 option d is your correct answer got it now in relation to lead poisoning recently they have asked a question in your pg exams too so always remember if they ask you what is the single best chelator for lead poisoning and the person is conscious so you can give a oral drug so in a conscious person we use a oral drug called dmsa the chelator called dmsa which is also called succimer then suppose the person is unconscious now you have to use a injectable preparation and because the severity is more so yes the that is why the person has become unconscious so there we use injectable agent that is edta single best oral agent of choice goes with dmsa injectable agent of choice goes with edta but suppose the person was a person having cns symptoms many cns symptoms were there and you diagnose the case as a case of lead encephalopathy which is mainly associated with children age group so in lead encephalopathy what we add in the treatment regimen is we first give british anti lewisite and then we give edta injections because british anti lewisite is present in a fatty acid oil we all know so it can go to your brain areas and it can counter the cns symptoms very easily as compared to edta that is why we mix bal with edta in a lead encephalopathy case or wherever there are cns findings because edta is not able to counter the extra lead which has entered in your brain areas got it then for cyanide they have been asking questions in every year i think when i have uh, when i went through your paper of last 5 to 7 years i saw that cyanide treatment and everything about cyanide should be understood so regarding treatment you all know we can use a single binding agent direct binding agent called hydroxycobalamin hydroxycobalamin can be used as a single binding agent then what else can be used is a kit consisting of three agents the name of the kit is lilies kit and this lilies kit consists of amyl nitrite pearls are there for inhalation these pearls are used they are about 10 to 12 pearls they are broken in a handkerchief and they are brought close to patient's airways in a case of cyanide poisoning then it also consists of sodium nitrite which is given through iv route sodium nitrite and this kit also consists of sodium thiosulfate so this is not a properly framed question why because they are trying to match sodium nitrite with cyanide ideally if you have to match one single agent the option should be hydroxycobalamin isn't it but yes sodium nitrite is a part of this kit so yes can be marked as your answer for cyanide poisoning So these are the two preferred treatments. All of you know the details about cyanide, na? That we will be covering in our Anacademy app. All the important poisons from where questions have been picked, na? I have also made my list. So I'll be covering the theory part of those poisons in the form of a special session next weekend. Next week. Answer this one. This is a straightforward question, one-liner question. confabulation is a feature of deficiency of yes confabulation means framing false stories or creating false stories by a person to fill the memory gaps because the person was having loss of memory so this is usually associated with confabulation feature as, is associated with korsakoff psychosis korsakoff psychosis and we all know korsakoff psychosis occurs due to 
vitamin B1 deficiency in a chronic alcoholic person, usually seen in a chronic alcoholic person. Orsaco psychosis. Where what occurs is amnesia, that is loss of memory. Along with amnesia, the person tries to fill the memory gaps due to amnesia by framing false stories. That is what is called confabulation. Given in the question, so the answer goes with TMA. What is this amnesia like? It is both anterograde and retrograde. Initially, the patient will have anterograde amnesia and later on, retrograde amnesia will also supervene. Suppose next time you get in your EMS exam a question as, in course of cough psychosis, the amnesia shown by the patient is, options are anterograde, retrograde, both. What should be marked? Both anterograde and retrograde. Because both are eventually seen in the patient. So initially anterograde but later on retrograde can also be seen and when retrograde amnesia occurs the condition becomes severe so it is basically a combination of both severe anterograde and retrograde amnesia remember it like this okay. next one then another manifestation of see alcohol poisoning is also very important cyanide poisoning is important uh, in alcohol poisoning, they keep on asking that all of the following are components of Wernick syndrome except. So yes, here your best answer goes with option C because this is a component or feature usually associated with Korsak of psychosis, which is a sort of which is a sort of complication, which is a sort of complicating thing. In Wernick's encephalopathy, what happens is the person goes to Goa on a party. Goa on a party where G stands for global confusion. Why is confused? Because of encephalopathic changes. Then O stands for ophthalmoplegia. Ophthalmoplegia due to involvement of cranial nerves. A stands for ataxia. Yes, ataxia occurs. And P stands for peripheral neuropathy. Peripheral neuropathy. So yes, the person goes to go on a party. The case is a case of Wernick's encephalopathy. And after going to go on a party, he switches on the AC. Means he now presents with amnesia and confabulation. It will be diagnosed as a case of Korsakoff psychosis. So these are two very important complications of alcoholism, chronic alcoholism. Why these features occur in a chronic alcoholic? Because due to deficiency of vitamin B1, what happens is, a trophy of mammillary bodies, a trophy of mammillary bodies at the base of the brain. As a result of a trophy of mammillary bodies, what happens is there is defect in your papage circuit, which is basically a circuit related to consolidation of your memory. So th mammillothalamic tract is there, which is in connection with your hippocampus. So that is going to be affected. So that is why the person shows you features of amnesia and all. Okay. So remember the mnemonics of your Wernick's encephalopathy and Korsak of psychosis. This is a straightforward, a very simple question. Another group of poison which they keep on asking is organophosphorus compound. So agricultural poisons is asked in your UPSC exam, TMS exam. Answer will be straightforward. Yes. Polynergic, polynergic symptom because OPCs they are irreversible competitive inhibitors of acetylcholinesterase enzyme. They are irreversible competitive inhibitors of acetylcholinesterase enzyme which was which is a, there with every human being to make a balance of the acetylcholine in the synapse in the neuromuscular junctions. So, if a inhibitor is given, yes, lots and lots, lots of acetylcholine will be there. Lots and lots of muscarinic and nicotinic effects will be there, which we see in OPC poisoning case. So, yes, the syndrome is a cholinergic syndrome. Okay. Which of the following is the primary antidote used in children with OPC poisoning? This is again a simple question. So that antidote area is very important. You get two to three questions from that antidotal area. 
So answer goes with atropin. Answer goes with atropin and atropin. Then in OPC poisoning, suppose I next time frame, which of the following treatment might be used along with atropin? So we all know that yes, oxims have a role. Oxims like pralidoxim, obidoxim, diacetyl monooxim, they have a role. If they are given before aging of the enzyme, but they are not useful after aging of the enzyme has occurred. Do oxims have a role in carbamate poisoning? Answer is no. These oxims, they have no role in carbamate poisoning. All of you know the basic reason, na? Because OPCs, they bind to only the steritic side of enzyme. Steritic side of the enzyme. So the anionic side of the acetylcholinesterase enzyme is free, where oxims bind to anionic side. But in carbamates, what happens? Both anionic and steritic site are utilized by carbamate group of poisons. Let us move ahead. Following the bite of a snake, a patient develops generalized myalgia, rhabdomyolysis, and paralysis. The most likely the snake implicated is. Again, a simple question. Then snake bite is another topic which they keep on asking questions. Answer goes with sea snakes, sea snakes. Because sea snake venom is usually musculotoxic or we say myotoxic. So a rhabdo myolysis like picture will be there. Then hyperkalemia is usually associated with sea snake bites. Because muscles are rich in potassium. Then cobra and crats are our neurotoxic bites, neurotoxic snakes. And vipers are vasculotoxic, V4 viper. B4 vasculotoxicity. Vasculotoxic. Answer this one. Small sized pupils are seen in poisoning with all except. Except. So the list of meiotics become very important. Always. List of meiotics is a very important area which everyone should remember. Yes, the answer goes with cocaine. So let us revise for the meiotic compounds. The important meiotic compounds are your phenol, then your chloral hydrate, chloral hydrate, which is commonly called as dry wine. Then barbiturate group of agents, barbiturate group of agents. Then your OPC compounds, opioid compounds, and cases of pontine hemorrhage, pontine. All these are important meiotics. They will lead to meiosis. But our poisonings like cocaine, LST, then your aspirin, they lead to mitriasis or we say they lead to dilated pupil. Dilated. At least remember these three agents. Then aspirin is one poison which is aspirin toxicity is repeatedly asked in CMS exam. So yes, if you remember these meiotics, you will be able to solve your question. Answer this one. The toxic effects of aluminium. This is another poison. Aluminium phosphide is due to release of. Is due to the release of. The toxic effects of aluminium phosphide is due to the release of phosphine gas. To confuse us, they have given phosgene as the option. Answer is phosphine gas to be exact. In another session, they asked, what is the pathonomic finding? Pathonomic finding in a cell phos poisoning case. This aluminum phosphate comes in market in the name of cell phos or alphos. 
and these cases do come in casualty so as medical officers you have to treat them so what is the most pathonomic finding if you do electrolyte of the person you will see hypomagnesemia picture this is a lab diagnosis clinically what you will see that the person is having profound hypotension you are giving fluid therapy but this hypotension is becoming refractory it is initially refractory even to fluid therapy so you will be alerted that the case might be a case of cell phosphor so these are two very important pathonomic findings and this hypomagnesemia is the major cause of mortality in cell phosphor poisoning case it is the major cause of mortality in cell phosphor that is why aluminium phosphide poisoning cases what is the treatment aspect which we utilize we try to level up this hypomagnesemic levels by giving iv magnesium sulfate this is a life saver approach life saver approach details about the theory of these poisons will be covering in a special class on anacademia i'm just trying to cover all the important question areas so that you have a idea that these are the poisons and we'll be covering the theory part okay not to worry answer this one beta oxalyl amino alanin is found in beta oxalyl amino alanin this is one another area food adulteration and all one question in every year so going by a simple mnemonic that lucknow development authority lucknow is in up capital of uttar pradesh in up you have a party in the name of esp if you remember these things together you will solve any such question why because i will decode this l for lathyrism and i will say lathyrism occurs due to b4 beta oxalyl amino alanin one another agent is there beta oxalyl amino propionic acid sometimes boa and boa they lead to lathyrism so it is used this lathyrisativus is used as a adulterant for your normal pulses commonly called as khesari dal lathyrisativus then d4 dropsy epidemic dropsy and dropsy occurs due to which toxic agent sanguinarin which is present in argimon mexicana oil so s for sanguinarin sanguinarin will be required and a stands for ascites endemic ascites which occurs due to p4 pyrrolizidine alkaloids which is present in crotalaria plants which acts as adulterant for your millets millet crops they are adulterated with crotalaria or junjunia plants so they are the toxic agent is pyrrolizidine theek hai yaad rahega aisa lda in the same sequence bsp तो जहां भी आपने देखा बोआ इज फाउंड इन बोआ विल गो विथ एल एल फॉर लथाइरासिटाइस यू विल सेव योर टाइम टू इन एनी सच क्वेश्चन एंड योर एक्यूरेसी विल बी मेंटेन आंसर दिस वन सिफेल हिमाटोमास आर मोस्टली फाउंड ओवर दिस टर्म यू ऑल मस्ट हैव रेड it is taught in obsgeny pedia as well as fm so cephal hematomas are mostly found over which bone answer goes with parietal bone so this is a simple table to help you recall any questions related to these two conditions which you can go through later on let us just give you a give me a briefing what is the cause of caput succedaneum this is a edematous swelling between skin and galea due to the pressure by the presenting part when the delivery of the fetus was occurring cephal hematoma is collection of blood between periosteum and skull due to periosteal capillary rupture this can be due to pressure of the presenting part but usually is due to instrumental delivery forceps delivery vacuum delivery they can lead to cephal hematoma condition out of these which one of the following is common this is commonly seen 
but this cephal hematoma is very very rare it is not a common presentation then suture lines regarding suture lines which one of the following crosses suture lines answer is this one which is common common one crosses all across your sutures but this does not this cannot extend why because it is between periosteum and the skull so this localized collection of the blood cannot extend across suture lines which one of the following is large usually answer is caput which is basically consisting of edematous swelling and what is the location location can be anywhere usually it is bilaterally also seen but cephal hematoma is usually small in size usually unilateral and mostly over parietal bones this was our question regarding development you all know which one of the following develops just after birth caput this develops after 1 to 2 days e4 days and regarding disappearance this disappears in one week but this cephal hematoma will be in a progressive phase for initial few days but and it will disappear in about 6 to 8 weeks 6 weeks matlab 1 and 1/2 to 2 months this for one week this disappears in one week this disappears roughly in one month this will help you recall the rare one disappears late regarding complications yes if all hematoma is a collection of blood so by body defense mechanism blood will have pigments those pigments will be degraded and they can give rise to jaundice like condition in the fetus and it can show you sometimes calcifications or ossifications also so these complications might be seen in cephal hematoma which is a rare condition rare condition i hope this area is clear so this is a question area this has been asked in our pg exams too and this we cover in relation to pregnancy fetal deaths in our fm area next one iska answer batao salicylate intoxication that is aspirin intoxication in adults usually causes usually causes batao answer anyone you might be wrong we will correct ourselves all of you try to put in your answers i want more answers अच्छा एक चीज बताओ वॉट आर द कॉजेज ऑफ हाई अनायन गैप मेटाबॉलिक एसिडोसिस देर आर फोर ब्रॉड कैटेगरीज ना वन इज कीटो एसिडोसिस टू एसिडोसिस लाइक कंडीशन विच कैन बी सीन इन एल्कोहल विच कैन बी सीन इन स्टारवेशन और डायबिटिक कंडीशन ठीक है then it can be seen in lactic acidosis lactic acidosis then it can be seen in some poisons like let us make a list what are the toxins so here the list consists of yes ethanol ethylene glycol ethylene glycol then your aspirin aspirin can also lead to anion gap metabolic acidosis then aur koi poison batao renal failure theek hai renal failure like condition this is the fourth broad category these are the four broad areas where high anion gap metabolic acidosis can occur so initially a case of aspirin poisoning is having an anion gap metabolic acidosis which is usually high metabolic acidosis like a picture so iski wajah se person ko kya hoga hyperapnea tachypnea that will give rise to respiratory alkalosis so usually this is a combination which is seen in aspirin poisoning case ab yahan par only two to option hi nahi otherwise this would have been the single best answer 
this combination is usually seen in aspirin poisoning cases but yes we know respiratory alkalosis to milta ab hyperchloremic milta hai ki nahi so we know whenever there is high anion gap metabolic acidosis usually hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis nahi milta hyperchloremia ke liye kya hona chahiye jo anion gap hai high nahi hona chahiye ab agar high anion gap metabolic acidosis ho raha hai to hyperchloremic picture usually won't be seen so yes one and two goes as the answers because two to only two is not an option so better answer kya hona chahiye one and two one and two. now next time kya puchhenge aapse how will you diagnose the case of sal salicylate poisoning in casualty what is the best finding which you should always remember in your mind these patients usually present with tinnitus tinnitus ringing in ears and there will be decreased hearing aap usko bologe you will tell the patient something patient won't understand because just one second one second there is power has gone it will come power backup will come so usually these patients have tinnitus and then a combination of respiratory alkalosis initially and this is later on seen by metabolic acidosis and these form the diagnostic modalities for our aspirin poisoning cases these three important findings okay. history history be important hai what you have consumed so the patient will tell you now therapeutic level kitna hota hai arsen uh, the iska aspirin ka what is the therapeutic level therapeutic level is 15 to 30 mg percentage when does toxicity occur toxicity of aspirin can begin at a level more than 30 so these features which we are reading in the form of acid base disturbance they are also based on the dose consumed but initially the person goes into tachypnea like condition why because the person will present with nausea vomiting diarrhea then there will be it acts as a physiological uncoupler you all know it acts as a physiological uncoupler of our electron transport chain so as a result person will go into hyperthermia and that is why he starts becoming restless and that is why his respiratory centers they tell the person ki ab now let us start our respiration fast because the person is going into hyperthermia without any reason so now as a result of this re respiratory alkalosis there will be metabolic acidosis also because levels of unmeasured unmeasured things will be high in the body because the person is consuming something which has a acidic nature so when does the levels of aspirin can kill a patient the fatal doses when the levels in the blood will be more than 100 mg percentage death of the person can also occur so this is the area 30 to 100 is the area where the patient will present to you with toxicity features and these are the initial presentations but the most pathonomic feature will be tinnitus theek okay? hai to ye word yaad rakhna how will you treat up case of salicylate poisoning regarding treatment yes we should always remember we can do gastric lavage to remove the unabsorbed poison remove the unabsorbed poison kyunki aspirin tablets kya hote hain na they form a sort of bejoer in your pit bejoer kya hota hai matlab clumps ban jate hain to un clumps ko hum remove kar sakte hain theek hai then we can give activated charcoal tablets they are highly beneficial they are highly beneficial this person yes vitamin k bhi de sakte hain because pt ct they are disturbed so we can give vitamin k injections correct activated charcoal to remove to bind the aspirin and help in its excretion sath mein aur kya kar sakte hain alkaline diuresis by using iv soda bicarb and a diuretic agent alkaline diuresis will help in excretion of the drug so these are the modalities which we can utilize to treat the person after doing gastric lavage 
what you will do as a doctor suppose you have done the gastric lavage of a aspirin poisoning case and this is the gastric lavage in a jar will you throw this jar, uh, jar sample or will you do something with this this is our, our role duty of a doctor no? along with management of the case our role is in final detection of the poison so whenever we do gastric lavage what we do we seal the jar as medical officers we get a seal isn't it in our respective government hospital so with the seal you will seal the jar you will hand it over to policeman police will take this jar to which department pathology department or forensic science lab police will take this jar to which department pathology department of the concerned hospital or forensic science lab answer is forensic science lab so these will be your future exam questions these are practical things practical things okay so they will take it to forensic science lab where a chemical examiner will be detecting the poison in the sample ye wala ek tough question but so we will try to make it simple batao iska answer batao socho kya hoga and electrical burn is which of the following <coughs> electrical contact burn and they have actually not given whether it is low voltage or high voltage these were the exact lines of the question even then even then i will show you a table of bailey and love see this table table of bailey and love isn't the answer hidden over here now the power backup has come power original power has come electricity has come just one second Now it is clear, I think. Huh? Always, always full thickness. Always, always full thickness. Here, li here lies your answer. I had to do a research because FM books were not telling me the answer. Best answer goes with full thickness. Electrical contact burns. Actually, the, when I did a further research, I could. get the literary in the literature that yes electric contact point what happens suppose this is the finger this is the finger and the person has touched a live wire suppose over here now what will happen this electricity will lead to a central necrosed area which we read in our fm and this will will be surrounded by a raised borders but this current when it enters inside the deeper areas the whole layers are burnt due to the passage of the current that is why the surgery books also say that yes it is full thickness burn usually that this is the source from where the question was picked the source was bailey and lovell okay. ab yahan par ek important area kya hai jo hame yaad rakhna hai regarding scald burns what are scald burns these are burns by hot fluids hot anything which is hot and fluidic usually these burns are superficial but will be deep in which age group this can become a potential question cald burns are usually superficial with deep dermal patches but they will be deep burns in which age group usually young infant infant is less than 1 in this age group you can see deeper scald burns hot fluidic burns baaki to sab mixed up hote hai superficial to deep electrical burns are usually full thickness scald burns are usually superficial rest all are mixed burns baaki kuch usme this these are the two things which can be this can be framed as a question next
and they have also written that these limbs if the person survives if a case of low voltage electrocution has survived these are small localized deep burns full thickness burns the limbs may need fasciotomies or amputations if abundant damage to muscles and nerves and vessels have occurred because this current electric current travels through nerves and vessels so if vessels are damaged the limb supply will become defective so you might need fasciotomies or amputations too so just see yes the burns should be full thickness burns and then it low voltage electrocution can lead to myoglobinuria like condition why because when these burns will travel through muscles it leads to jenkers degeneration of muscles jenkers degeneration of muscles so you have to treat all these conditions acidosis myoglobinuria then when muscles proteins will be broken down hyperkalemic picture will be there you have to manage the patient on these lines in a case of low voltage electrocution if the person survives answer this one come to some vitamin deficiency vitamin deficiency is a very important topic hot topic not only for cms exams for pg as well as fmg exams recently held fmg exams was also having 3 to 4 questions from your vitamin topic so this is a topic which you should do a mastery so that none of the questions are missed iska answer batao just give me one second i have to switch on a power source batao one option is very evident one option is very evident that yes confabulation will go with confabulation will go with thiamin and nothing else okay as a result of korsakoff psychosis yes confabulation then dementia is also very evident your four d's of pellagra pellagra is due to vitamin b3 deficiency where what occurs four d's kon kon se four d's which are the four d's of pellagra are we revise correct we will try to revise all the vitamins together okay with the help of the simple table then ye to hamara match ho gaya iske sath theek hai niacin ke sath whose hump skin as a result of follicular hyperkeratosis which is also called phrenoderma or toad skin like this this is a feature of this is a feature of which vitamin deficiency answer is vitamin a phrenoderma toad skin due to follicular hyperkeratosis so yes i can write four over here ab ek hi to bacha sticky paint rashes of lower extremity yes zinc deficiency mein what happens is hypogonadism hyperpigmentation so pigmentary changes might be seen in the lower extremity usually flaky paint word use hota hai uske sath quash yorker ke sath but there because the child was not getting the nutrients so yes zinc deficiency might be seen in such children so yes 3 4 2 1 kahan par hai 3 4 2 1 option so this is your toad skin appearance also called as phrenoderma 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 or toad skin which occurs due to follicular hyperkeratosis answer this one which one of the following pairs is not correctly matched which one of the following pairs is not correctly ye bhi simple hai question is simple one answer goes with very very occurs due to vitamin b1 yes this one will be our answer so let us do a quick recap of b1 to b12 all the vitamins so let us start with b1 that is also called thiamine in peripheral nervous system it leads to very very like features in central nervous system it leads to wernicke's encephalopathy and korsakoff psychosis regarding deficiency we are covering regarding deficiency b2 deficiency b2 is also called riboflavin leads to b2 leads to c2 what is c2 c for chiliosis c for corneal vascularization in addition remember this term magenta colored tongue 
इज असोसिएटेड विथ राइबोफ्लेबिन डेफिशिएंसी तो बी टू में क्या होता है सी टू चिलियोसिस वट इज चिलोसिस एंगल ऑफ माउथ यू सी सम इरोजन रेकेज एट द एंगल ऑफ माउथ तो चिलोसिस लाइक फीचर अकर्स एंड कॉर्नियल वैस्कुलराइजेशन अकर्स इन कॉर्निया वॉट यू विल सी इन द आईज that blood vessels are present in cornea which are not normally seen so corneal vascularization is a very important feature of riboflavin deficiency b3 is also called niacin nicotinic acid nicotinamide it can lead to glossitis and pellagra pellagra consists of four d's diarrhea dementia dermatitis and death in addition it can lead to hyperpigmentation of sun exposed limbs in addition this dermatitis can be in the form of which necklace this dermatitis can be in the form of Casals necklace, which is a repeatedly asked topic in the neck area, exposed area. You see dermatitis picture called Casals necklace. Then come to B five, also called as pantothenic acid. This was a separate question in another year of your EMS. They directly asked burning feet syndrome is associated with burning feet. Is associated with five. इसको याद रखने का एक बहुत सिंपल तरीका है. Five start with F. Burning feet. It has F. Burning feet goes with five. B five is pantothenic acid. P for penta. Penta is for five. Everywhere you will see that things related to number five. Five for penta. Five for feet. Come to B six. I'm just giving you the tricks to remember. we are not going into details of these details will be going in our special class come to pyridoxine pyridoxine deficiency is associated with which drug intake most commonly seen in a case of tuberculosis which drug therapy you all know isoniazid isoniazid okay isoniazid and b6 deficiency leads to convulsions why because it is involved in production of gaba gaba is not produced so lots of excitatory features will be there due to lots of glutaminergic activity because gaba is not getting produced then b7 is your biotin biotin deficiency is very rarely seen can lead to dermatitis enteritis and alopecia like features Folic acid and cobalamin. Folic acid is vitamin B9. Cobalamin is vitamin B12. So yes, you all know folic acid and cobalamin has some common features like macrocytic megaloblastic anemia, hypersegmented neutrophils, glossitis. But in folic acid there is no neurological symptoms. But in a case of cobalamin deficiency, you get SACD, subacute combined degeneration, and which tracts are affected? in the name of first alphabets we can recall the tracts which are affected s for spino cerebellar tracts there a cellular tracts t for lateral cortico spinal tracts involved in your pain and temperature cortico spinal tract and d for dorsal columns involved involved in your proprioception This yes, dorsal columns, corticospinal tract, spinal—all these tracts will be damaged in B12 deficiency, not in B9 deficiency. Not in B. So that's all for today. Tomorrow we will be covering few more questions. About 15 to 20 questions we will be covering tomorrow. any queries with regards to any question or anything in particular that is special session which i am talking about now tomorrow also we have a session we will be covering the repeat mcqs only in our special session which i am planning for uh, next week most likely on weekend itself there we will cover the theory part of these area in about one hour all the important poisons will be covering the theory parts and with regards to vitamin deficiencies we will be seeing all the images and the key points okay so 
चलो देन बाबाई टाइम टू एंड द सेशन लेटस मीट टुमारो सेम टाइम एग्जाम स्पेशल क्लास आई विल प्लान कस्टू मोस्ट लाइकली नेक्स्ट वीकेंड इज नाइनटीन एंड ट्वेंटी ना मोस्ट लाइकली ऑन नाइनटीन आई विल बी प्लानिंग इन द मॉर्निंग टाइम दैट इज नाइनटीन सैटरडे फूड प्रिजर्वेशन भी कर लो ठीक है ठीक है दैट आई विल दैट आई विल लुक फॉर ठीक है एकता फूड प्रिजर्वेशन हाँ देर आर मल्टीपल क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम फूड पैस्चराइजेशन एंड ऑल ठीक है जो ऑल द इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स विच आई एम एबल टू कवर इन दिस स्पेशल क्लास ना आई विल ट्राई टू रैप अप बट आई माई होल फोकस विल बी टूवर्ड्स द टॉक्सिकोलॉजी एस्पेक्ट वॉट एवर इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइजन आर कमिंग दे विल अगेन कम so we should at least be able to answer those questions then with regards to vitamins we'll be covering the important features from where questions are there so these two we will be doing completely food preservation i will look at how to cover it in a short span of time the key features we can revise so then bye bye bye